Okay, so as you read the lab manual, the first thing you want to do is make sure that everything is properly connected and everything is solid. Um, and our lab technicians have already done that. We've made sure that the uh, cooling water to this electric dyno is properly connected. You know, the, the dyno is mounted solidly. The engine is mounted solidly. So, you know, we're pretty much ready to go. The fuel tank has been full, has been filled up. Um, we want to make sure that the cooling water is now on. Um, this is actually a filter here. So, um, you know, the off position is that way. Um, the on position is this way. So we want to make sure that it's lined up with the tubing. And then we're going to give it just a little bit of flow. We don't need a lot, maybe a, like a quarter of a turn. That's all you need, just a little bit. And we just want to make sure that the water is flowing through. So the water comes in and it comes out. And there's this little plastic tube here. And uh, that's actually fine. I mean, we, we don't even need that much water flow, but it's good enough. And typically, I just like to hang it here into the reservoir on this dyno, just so the water doesn't you know, flood out the floor here. Okay. Um, so we're going to start the engine up here shortly. Um, we've got the tank. We're ready to go. The water is all ready to go. And now we want to make sure that the fuel supply to the engine is on. So there's a little black knob or switch here. We just need to make sure that's pushed backwards. If it's forwards, then it cuts off the fuel flow. We don't want that. So push that back. Um, we also want to make sure that um, the electric supply is on to the spark plug. So back here, there's a little red knob and it's um, just going to be pulled up to make sure that we have electricity. So that's ready to go. Um, now I've already plugged in the fuel flow meter and I've already plugged in the actual instrumentation to the dyno and the controls. Um, that's all inside and we're going to get to that here in just a moment. Um, clearly this is our engine. Um, we also want to make sure that we have the choke in the appropriate position. Um, we may not need it because quite frankly we've already run this engine a little bit earlier today. Um, so it should be just fine. Um, but nonetheless the choke is engaged by moving this gray uh, little switch here to the right. Um, the throttle is already in its idle position. I've checked that out inside earlier. Um, so basically, we're essentially ready to go. And now it's just a matter of pulling the starter and hopefully getting this thing to run. Um, by the way, we don't absolutely have to use this. I mean, th this is just a fan. Um, but it's always nice to use it. Excuse me. So let's just make sure we have enough cooling on the engine. So we're just going to plug the fan in. Um, note that there's no shroud over the inside you know you can easily stick your finger in there and really hurt yourself so once this is on just just give it uh plenty of leeway and now we're ready to start it so i'm just going to go ahead and pull it see if i can get it to go start it up nicely um, now typically we would let this warm up for a number of minutes um, but again we don't absolutely have to because it's already been run previously um, i probably don't even need the choke so I'm just going to turn the choke off. And now it's, it's operating. So we've got our water, got the engine going. So now we're just going to walk inside and look at the controls and start actually running the experiment. So now we're inside the lab. Certainly we can see the engine operating outside. We can see the electric dynamometer next to it. Um, again, I've already powered on the dyno and the control. So this is a magtrol device. Um, this is a fuel flow meter. Um, I should note that the fuel flow meter is going to give you the instantaneous fuel flow, but it's also going to give you the cumulative fuel flow. And we do have a little bit of an issue. I mean, the fact is that this engine really doesn't um, maintain a constant fuel flow rate particularly well. And as you can see, even in these few seconds, the fuel flow is actually jumping around quite a bit. So when it's time for us to measure our fuel flow, you're not going to simply measure the instantaneous flow. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure the cumulative flow, uh, start your timer, wait 30 seconds, and then measure the cumulative flow again. And then the difference between the beginning and final flow. In fact, I shouldn't even call it flow. This is the volume of fuel that's gone through this device here. The, the fuel flow meter is that cylinder that says max on it right there above the engine. Uh, but nonetheless, um, you know how much fuel had run into the engine at the beginning of your 30 second period. You know how much fuel had run through the engine 
by the end of the 30 second period, the difference is the amount of fuel in 30 seconds. So you divide one into the other and you're gonna be able to find the fuel flow rate. So that's something to note. Now, this is the dyno itself. Um, this is gonna read power, it's gonna read torque, it's gonna read speed. Um, right now, we don't have it set up um, to do any kind of control, um, but we'll do this here shortly. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna push this button here that says open loop. And you push open loop. And now you can see it gives you a little percentage over here. Um, and it's gonna give you uh, basically zero because right now we have absolutely no load on the dynamometer, okay? Um, so we're now ready um, to make sure that we can load up the engine. Um, there's a little um, light here that should say brake status. And right here, brake status, it actually says off right now. So we need to make sure that the brake status is on. So we gotta push the brake on button. So right here, brake on, brake off. Make sure that goes to the on mode, all right? So now we're ready to start loading up the engine. We're ready to start increasing the throttle. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to start with a rather high throttle setting. We're gonna pull the throttle out until we get a speed of about 7,000 RPM, um, but that's gonna be under no load. And then we're going to start loading up the engine in increments each time dropping the speed by about 250 RPM. So first let's go over here to the throttle. Um, so this is our throttle setting. Um, let's make sure it's unlocked. So, you know, just kind of make sure it's turned counterclockwise. It's not gonna move very far. And then we're going to pull that and at the same time, keep an eye on the speed. And again, I wanna bring the speed up to 7,000. So let me actually move into this side. Um, so I'm just gonna slowly pull this out and we can see the speed is slowly increasing. So just go slow. And again, it's not under any load, but still we don't wanna rev it up too quickly. So when it hits 7,000 RPM, we're actually right around three quarters throttle. I mean, personally, I just never like running any of our engines at wide open throttle. Not that we can't. Yeah, it's not very stable right now. I'm not sure why. Nonetheless, we pull it out a little more. Yeah, I'm not really sure why. It might mean that we need some sort of adjustment. I mean, actually, if, if you could kind of show up in the engine. You can see that as I move the throttle cable, it's adjusting the throttle. And we should be somewhere, you know, in the higher end of the throttle position range, but I don't know, maybe one of those little wires is bent or something. So we might have to make some sort of adjustment here in the future. Anyway, for right now, let us just assume that we are at the right throttle position. Granted, we do have to make some adjustments in the real world here, but um, I'm going to get to the right throttle position and I'm going to kind of lock it in place. We just turn the throttle handle here to lock it in place. Okay, so this is now turned and it's in place. And now what we need to do is we need to record our first set of data. So this is basically our idle data, if you will. Um, so again, we're going to um, look at the power. It's only 0.011 or so horsepower. Um, we'll measure the torque. Now, why that's reading negative, I have no idea. So again, clearly something is out of adjustment, but we'll have to deal with that in the future. Um, and now what I can do is I can record the fuel flow. So again, get out your stopwatch, um, you know, make, well, start the stopwatch, record the cumulative flow for a 30 second period. You can certainly see how the instantaneous flow is jumping around quite a bit. 
Um, again, at the end of that 30 second period, you know, don't forget to record the power, the torque and the speed. And then we move on to the next operating point. So um, again, this should be a lot more stable than it is. And I really have no understanding as to why that's happening, uh, but it is. So let's have to live with it for right now. All right, so clearly this speed is jumping a lot and it's gonna be hard for me um, to make it stable and to adjust properly. There's a little bit of a air bubble or a fuel vapor bubble in the fuel line. Maybe that has something to do with it. Well, nonetheless, let me at least demonstrate how one would use it. So at this point, we can actually start adjusting the load and that's here through this. Now, when I adjust this, you can see that it's just gonna adjust in a percentage. So now we're at 1% load, 2% load, 3% load. So just increase the load uh, by a certain percentage. And in doing so, the speed should begin to drop. So when it drops by about 250 RPM, and again, this is very unstable right now, when it drops by about 250 RPM, then you're gonna do it all over again, right? You're gonna do the cumulative flow to measure the flow rate. Uh, clearly the power is going up, the torque is now positive, so that's good. Um, the speed seems like it's dropped a little bit. And then we'll give it a little more after we've taken that data. So, you know, again, increase it until the speed drops by about 250 RPM. Do it again. Keep increasing, you know, each time the speed's gonna drop by about 250. Now, clearly the engine is not stable today, but I'll make sure that the data you have for these virtual lab experiments is nice and steady. So anyway, that would be our first throttle setting. Um, then what we want to do is we want to simply unload it. Um, so I'll just put the load back down to zero. And then we're going to adjust to a different throttle. So that would be our highest throttle setting. So now we'll push it in maybe a quarter of the way or so. So that's weird. It shouldn't be increasing speed when I do that. Anyway, so I'm gonna push the throttles in a little bit. Ideally, at no load, which is what we have now, um, we're gonna have a maximum speed of about 5,500. Um, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll record our first data set. We'll adjust the load as necessary. Now, one thing I might note is that you see there's this little cursor here and it's actually moved, okay? It, it's moved from underneath the first to underneath the second or I guess now the, well, the second decimal point, uh, the third point, all right? So we're gonna have to adjust that back. I mean, we don't wanna have to adjust in hundreds of a percent, right? So um, here we need to make sure that we adjust it. I think it's this PSC button. Nope, I'm wrong. Um, well, it says which button to push. Um, there we go, it's the pair button over here. So just push this a couple of times until we've underlined the single digits and then we can start adjusting the load in 1% increments again. And again, you do the same thing, right? You, you increase the load, um, we're at 5,500 RPM, we'll drop the speed down to somewhere around 2,000 RPM in 250 increments. And then when we're done with that, we'll just unload it again and And then we'll bring it down to about a quarter throttle. So at this point, the speed should be steady at about 4,000 RPM. Obviously, it's not being real steady. And then again, we do the same thing all over again. Um, this time, we'll do it in about 200 RPM increments. And we do the same thing, right? Um, again, the load needs to be adjusted so that it underlines the single digits. And then we can make our adjustments, right? We record our data here at idle. And then we're going to increase the load, drop the speed by a couple hundred RPM. Again, power, torque, speed, fuel flow rate. And we just keep going until we're done. So I think that's good enough for this demonstration. Um, let me just unload the dyno. And when we're done, um, we simply have to go back outside and shut down the engine. So I'm just gonna go out there and do that. Actually, let me do this here. Let me just drop the throttle all the way down. Um, so this is true idle. 
And I'm just gonna go outside. And, and typically we just switch that red switch that's in the front here, although it's on the back on the outside. And that's gonna stop the electricity, the spark plug, and the engine should stop. So I'm just gonna go out here and do that real quick. So the next step then is for us to just turn off the water supply outside. And basically you're just gonna do everything in reverse from what I did at the very beginning. Um, we'll turn off the water. Um, you know, we'll put the filter offline. Um, one thing that we also would typically do um, because we don't want water sitting inside the dynamometer. Um, if you look here, you can see the hose on either side. Uh, there's the inlet, here's the outlet. Um, typically what we would do is we would actually pull the hose off of the inlet and then take a, a compressed air line, or I've even seen students use a bicycle pump, and then just push air through it to make sure that all the water is then gonna flow out. And you know that way we're not gonna have any rust and all that forming inside the cooling portion of that dynamometer. So this then is your Honda engine experiment.